from the number one best-selling author of Life Rescripted. You're now tuning in to the Year of Purpose podcast. I'm Zephan Moses Blacksburg. What's going on, everyone? This is Zephan Blacksburg, and I am Mr. Life on Fire himself, Nick Unsworth, in the house, coming to you live from California. It's so awesome to have you here, Nick. I've been following you for quite a long time, and you're just so motivational and inspirational. And thank you so much for spending some time with me today. Awesome, man. Well, I am uh, fired up to be here. I love what you got going on and congrats on all the success. And uh, yeah, man, I'm just fired up to dive in, you know? Yeah. So you run Life on Fire and this is, you know, this is something that so many people want, right? Like I was stuck in my life and that's where I kind of started the whole Year of Purpose mm-hmm. podcast and this idea of life rescripted. And I, I bet you can relate to to like being stuck and just not totally sure where yeah. you want to go. Uh, what was that like for you, you know, when you were first starting your businesses and, and, and just getting started up front. Yeah, I, I, what I would say is, I mean, ever since I was a little kid, I always knew exactly where I wanted to be, you know, so I was always the dreamer. I was always so fixated on this thought of just living a life on fire where I love what I do for work, where I was making a difference, helping people, making a great living. And what really sucked is that for so many years, there was so many challenges along the way, you know, and and things weren't easy. And it was like, just constantly battling through challenges. And um, I mean, I had failed multiple times, you know, near bankruptcy twice. And but it was just like, the thing that continued to propel me through everything was just never losing sight of the dream. And it's like every time when people were like, man, why don't you just quit? Or why don't you be more like your brother? Or just get a job. It was just like, you know what? I allowed that stuff to, to fire me up and fuel me. And I always knew that after you know reading enough books, it's like every entrepreneur has a story. you know, And every entrepreneur has to fail at like X amount of businesses. you know, And for some, the X value may be zero. Some people just like hit it out of the park in the beginning. And it's like, those are the people that you're like, wow, like they built, you know, this big tech company or something, or, you know, other people, it's like, for me, I had to fail at 11 businesses. And so I just knew that eventually I would make it, you know, I had enough belief in myself just knowing that, you know, I hope it's not when I'm 40, you know, like I just knew eventually I I would make it. And in my head, I was fixated on, um, you know, selling a business by 30 years old. And so for years, I, I, I always wanted to do that. And sure enough, like it happened by that time. I wish I picked like 23 years old, you know what I mean? Um, but it's like, it was always, um, just knowing that I had to just basically fail forward fast and just get through enough of these failures and then eventually I would find my rhythm and find what I'm really here to meant to do, you know? Yeah, it, I like what you said about kind of using uh, what people said as fuel for the fire. So like, it reminds me of this time where we were out boating, you know, just family vacation and there's this huge cliff, you know, maybe 50, 60 feet up and we see people jumping off of it. My dad turns to me and I'm, you know, 15, 16, whatever. He's like, I bet you I'll do that. And I'm one of those people where it's like, if you say I can't do something, I'll watch, you know? Oh yeah. I was like out of the boat without a life jacket before he even finished his sentence, climbing up, jumped off the cliff. First time I've ever gone cliff jumping. And so I, I think that's such a great tool is like use the haters and use the naysayers and, and the people talking under their own limitations to, you know, fuel your own fire, right? It's kind of like the, uh, the you won't do it. Like when someone says you won't do it, it's like, oh, yeah, <laughs> like I'll Watch. jump off that cliff or I'll, you know, I will find a way to succeed. And, and that concept of like, you know, as entrepreneurs, we have to find ways to motivate us. And what's, what's wild is I was actually more driven to prove people wrong than I was to prove myself right. And it's pretty wild that sometimes we have to know what fuels us. And one of the hardest things for most entrepreneurs is actually finding the deep-rooted motivation to do the things necessary to actually be successful. Because when you look at most entrepreneurs and you look at what they're doing and why don't they have the dream that they want to have or why are they still working 15-hour work days and they're not where they want to be? And it's because they're not actually doing the things necessary, the profit-producing activities, to get them to where they want to go. And why not is because, yeah, they want to be an entrepreneur. Yeah, they've dreamed about it. They have all these thoughts and visions, but they're not either truly connected with their deeper purpose that's pulling them through. Um, And what I find is that it's so interesting that um, until you 
have that deeper sense of motivation, it's like you're pushing and pushing and pushing as an entrepreneur. It's like you're relying on discipline and, you know, stamina and willpower to like go, go, go versus when you connect your entire business to a greater purpose that's bigger than you. It's like Tony Robbins always says, it that will literally pull you through, you know, pull you through the challenges, pull you through all the things that you have to do. So so it's almost kind of like being, you know, when you jump on a surfboard and you've got to paddle out through the waves, right? And the waves keep crashing into you. But it's like once you figure out that that meaning behind it, it's like you've turned around, you've stood up on the board and the wave just kind of carries you where you want to go. That's good, man. That might be sad. That's good. <laughs> yeah. So it, I like that. It, it's and it's so true. I mean, once you kind of open yourself up to this possibility of where you want to go, you know, because so many people are like, oh, I can never do that. But that's what I want to do. Once you realize yeah. that, like when you ask the world for for this, it's going to give it to you. Man, that's where that wave just really carries you. I mean, I've seen it in my own life. I mean, I started a business at 16. It was this like crappy computer repair business. My mom and dad had to drive me around to people's houses to fix computers. And of course it failed because I just wasn't in it, you know? Yeah. And I started my video business uh, two years ago. And, you know, most entrepreneurs fail within the first year and made, yeah. it, made it through the first year. And most who make it past the first year fail in the second year. Yeah. I'm going there. And you know what's three. cool? What I love about you is you got a coach and you invested in yourself and now look at where things are going. You know, that's the one thing. If I could change anything, it's like if I got a coach when I hit thirty. Yeah. You know, yeah, I, I sold a business by thirty, but I was completely unhappy and, and unfulfilled because it's not all about the money. And I knew it wasn't about the money, but that was like, I spent, invested all of my 20s. I sacrificed so much, vacations, relationships, you name it. And by the time I actually did it, it was like, man, sweet, I have a view, I've got a beautiful place, I've got nice stuff, but I was single, you know, the business had no meaning at that point. And, you know, then I brought the, got, got the coach. And it's like, when I just think about with your story, I think for you getting the coach, it's like that just, that will help you see things on a bigger level and then grow so much faster, you know, and not be one of the 5% that, that actually makes it. It's like get into the, you know, not instead of 95% fail, it's like, you know, with a coach, you know, the, the, you just flip the script, you yeah. know. It, it, and it's so interesting to hear how transparent you are in your story that, you know, 11 businesses, right? It was 11 yeah. 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 So, I mean, this is not something that happens overnight, despite what so many people see, just because, you know, they just see our online presence, right? They find our website. They're like, oh, man, this guy just woke up one day and it worked. Yeah. It, it didn't. Like, that's not how it works. Oh, yeah. So I'm curious to hear from you, like, what was maybe your hardest point in, in leading up to uh, 30? Like, what was what was the biggest obstacle that hit you and just totally caught you off guard? I would say the um, out of all the, and I have a lot of like train wreck, bad business, things that just totally kept screwing up. I mean, I had a pattern of feeling like I needed a business partner and um, and I had gotten taken advantage of so many different times where I was the workhorse, I was the idea guy, but I always felt like I needed someone else. You know, I never had the full confidence to do it all on my own. And every single time I got just screwed, you know, workhorse and did all the work and then I reaped very little of the benefits, you know, and, and every time it, we ended up, you know, the partner somehow would end up kind of screwing things up and, and so that was just a constant pattern and so finally I uh, created a business called the New Perks Card and so this was after the real estate crash, so I was in real estate, I literally got into real estate right as it crashed. Ooh. I mean, imagine this timing, I moved to San Diego to get into real estate to work on a big project with you know with a friend and two weeks after I get to San Diego that's when the meltdown happened in the economy like like just think of that timing of just like literally the entire meltdown happens so and that project ended up totally being awful and so I come back to Connecticut and uh, I was like you know what I just need to do something on my own no partners and I need to do something that's gonna be meaningful that's gonna help people and so I come up with this concept where there's a card that was the size of, think of like a business card size. And it was called the New Perks card. And it folded out like an accordion. So think of a business card that folds out. So it had a couple different, you know, flaps to it. And 
that card had discounts to about 45 local businesses in the town that I lived in, in West Hartford, Connecticut. So I, I mean, imagine how tough it is to go into a business and get them to give you half off a bottle of wine every Tuesday for the next 12 months when someone shows this card. Because they're like, who are you? You know, like, why would I put that discount on the card? And so I had to create the vision of the new Perks card. And I'm like, you know, we're going to have 45 businesses in West Hartford. You know, when someone buys the card for $20, 10 is going to go to charity. So you're being a part of something that's charitable. And then the other 10 is going to go to advertising. And I was like, my marketing plan includes, you know, online marketing. And I had this whole platform. And I said, we will literally have thousands of these cards in circulation. And and I was like, for the rest of it, it's like, listen, if you have, you know, are you busy on Mondays and Tuesdays? So like, no. And I'm like, okay, perfect. So if we get foot traffic on Mondays and Tuesdays or, you know, and they come in with a new perks card and they get half off a bottle of wine, do you think that they're going to buy appetizers and food? They're like, yeah. So I had to like create the vision. I had to sell all these businesses on the card and have agreements. And so it was very challenging, but I was so driven because I wanted there to be um, you know, I, I knew in, in what I attached to is the fact that if I could get thousands of these cards in circulation and then when someone buys the card for 20 bucks, half the money would go to charity. But the thing was, it wasn't my charity. It wasn't what I was passionate about. You know, you ever see people that do the walk for breast cancer, they do the walk for whatever cause. Yeah. Well, people are always asking their friends for money, but there's not a value exchange. It's more of like, a like, Hey, do you mind just giving money for this cause because I have a family member that's ill? Now, of course, we all feel, you know, like we want to support our friends and family. We feel awful about whatever they're going through. But I was like, there has to be a better way. Like, what if there's a value exchange? So instead of saying, you know, hey, friends and family, would you just support this cause? That's important to me. It's like, you know, would you support this cause? But here's this new perks card that you'll save hundreds of dollars throughout the year, you know, whether it be at a restaurant, you know, grocery store, dry cleaning, jewelry store. So the cool thing is that people loved it. People wanted to buy it and it got them thinking about giving because they had to choose, uh, you know, where that the donation will go to. Mm -hmm. Now, it wasn't what I was making them donate to. It was their choice. So I had then I so I negotiated with all these big nonprofits Heart Association, Make-A-Wish, and these organizations, it's like I was trying to just give them money, but they were all skeptical. It took really? me months to like allow me to give you money. I mean, crazy. I couldn't use their logos on the site, nothing. They didn't want to have any, you know. Um, but I was like, can I just send you a check? <laughs> like, I'll, I'm going to put you in a drop-down menu when they check out. Like, no logo. I, I just want to give you money. So long story short, I create this whole business. And my vision was that this would help me build my my brand. So what's in it for me is I would build my brand, I would do something good, and I was a realtor at the time, so I would be the person that everyone would know, you know. And and imagine in your town, like you walk down the main street with all the cool restaurants, and there's this like diamond that says, "We proudly support the new Perks Card of of West Hartford." And so I had these decals made for all the windows, and everyone's just like, "Wow, this is you know this is cool. Like, what's this Perks Card, you know?" And um, so it was super cool, and then it, it took off. So everyone was loving it. I'm on TV. I'm in all the papers. And what was cool is that this was like a business in a box. So I was going to take it and then just sell like little mini franchises to realtors throughout, you know, Keller Williams real estate across the country. So it's taken off. I become like a top, you know, pro producing realtor. Everyone's thinking like, holy crap, like Unsworth finally is doing it. You know, like he's finally made it, you know. And sure enough, everything's going good. And then all of a sudden, people start saying things like, you've got to go to the next level. You've got to hire an advertising agency. Like, you've, you've got something here. You struck gold, you know. And so I'm like, all right, you know. And all the local businesses are like, you've got to go to this one particular company. And so, you know, I was like, all right, I'll check them out. And I went there and I had my marketing plan. I just, you know, written out is about, I don't know, eight pages or so. And I go in there with it and it's all grassroots. It's all word of mouth. It's all like guerrilla marketing, you know, and online marketing. Now that I had some money, I could put into ads. And and they say, they literally took it. Imagine in a swivel chair, the guy like we sit face to face and the guy spins around and just dumps it right in the trash. <laughs> like literally. Wow. Like, like, we won't be needing this anymore. <laughs> and I'm like, 
what kind of a-hole does that? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, if you, and you didn't even read it. And he's just like, you know, we know what to do. And, you know, you need to be, a, you need to do TV commercials. And so, long story short is they, um, they just say that, you know, that's the only way. Like, you got to do TV commercials and, uh, you know, and advertise at the, at the six o'clock spot where the news is. And I'm thinking, this is crazy. Like, isn't it expensive for TV commercials and isn't it not targeted? Like, who's ever sitting in front of the TV? And, you know, six o'clock news, think of the demographics. Six o'clock evening news, that's like anybody could be in front of that. Like, at least for like a show, if you were to advertise to like someone that's watching the X Games, like you could market like energy drinks, right? It's like the the news is like anybody, right? Except for kids, right? you know? And so I'm like, that doesn't seem targeted. And, and I was like, why would we advertise to the entire state of Connecticut? My card is only good in West Hartford. People aren't going to drive two hours to save 10% on their dry cleaning. You know, they're not going to drive two hours for, for a free appetizer, you know? So it didn't make sense. I didn't trust my gut. And I just, but they were so, you know, they were so we combative with it. And they're like, we have your best interest in mind. And I said, you know what? Maybe this is why I've been failing. Maybe I just need to get out of, out of my own way. Maybe I need to let the pros do it, right? So I decided to do it. I spent $10,000 for a 15-second animated commercial. Oh, you would man. die if you saw this thing. I can actually <laughs> send you a link. You may have to put this in the notes or something. It's 15 seconds, and it's a little animation. And it's like $10,000. Like you would just – we could probably make that on Fiverr for five bucks. <laughs> and so I do that. And they, you know, I, I have this whole party. So I've got people at my place. I'm living in a dump, you know, no kitchen cabinets, like old, yellow, nasty looking countertops and, you know, just just a rugged area of town. Have people over, you know, we're, we're you, know, you know, popping bottles of wine. We're all excited. Like the commercial's coming, you know what I mean? It's like, it's 5.57, three more minutes. It's coming. Watch the commercial. We're like, oh, wow, 15 seconds go by. And I'm thinking like, this is going to be great. I go to like my, you know, authorized.net merchant account, you know, wait a few minutes, nothing. Go back an hour later, nothing. I'm like, oh crap, I'm freaking out. It must be broken. It has to be broken. <laughs> has to be. Because that, that ad set cost me 10 grand a week. And, and I'm thinking I'm going to bring in thousands, right? So sure enough, it's not broken, right? Out of a total of a total investment of thirty thousand dollars, guess how much money I made back in card total gross card sales. Oh man, I don't even think you broke even from what right. I heard. <laughs> okay, so break even would be let's say thirty grand. Yeah, I had gross sales of two hundred and eighty bucks. Wow, half of that money went to charity. Hundred and forty dollars was my money back. And it was devastating. You know what I mean? Like I put so much into the business. I didn't have money to build it. So I had some credit card debt going on. So that pounded me like into credit card debt. Yeah. And, um, and it was devastating. And so I, I, you know, I'm freaking out with the advertising company. Turn it off. Turn it off. They're like, we've never had someone quit this fast. I'm like, dude, I'm not. Yeah. I can't blow 30 grand and make two, make $140. Like that's insane. They're like, you need to just do it more. It's about frequency and branding. So I, I kill that. And then what was wild is the traffic kept coming. And I'm freaking out saying like, you know, I thought I said to turn it off. Yeah. Like, why are you still advertising? And they assured me that they weren't, right? So a few days later, I found out that I had actually ranked on the first page of Google <laughs> unexpectedly. So while it wasn't converting because it's marketing all over the state, it only made sense in my town. But what percentage of people were in my town, right? So... What was happening is I was getting all this traffic, but it wasn't relevant. The offer wasn't relevant. So long story short is because I ran ads, and this is back in like 2008, so mm -hmm. Google's algorithm just perceived it to be valuable because of all the traffic. So then I actually got it to rank on the first page of Google accidentally. And I'm like, wow. But like think of how that awful situation, instead of it being like, this is going to ruin my life, it was, wow, what's the positive? So every single time I failed, I always took it in stride. I always was excited. Like now I know not to do that. And now I know, you know, every single challenge, I always pulled out the positive, right? So the positive was, holy crap, look at what happens on Google. 
look at what happens with this traffic that I paid 30 grand for. You know, it's not converting, but imagine if I had an offer that was. So fast forward, I'm all, I'm still excited. People are still loving the cards. I go into my real estate office and I get this letter. I've got the West Hartford News coming in for a meeting in the morning. And uh, that was my first meeting of the day. And so I open up this package and open the package. It's a freaking lawsuit. It's a cease and desist from a big national eight-figure business, eight or even nine-figure business that said I had just ripped off their trademark. And I was obviously devastated from that too, right? And so I get this package. I got the, the West Hartford News like in the office and I'm like, oh my God, how am I going to put on a happy face right now? And so then I call them up and long story short – is they are coming after me with full legal team. They're like, Mr. Ronsworth, we need to speak to your legal department. Legal department? <laughs> I'm like, dude, I'm 20. You know, Speaking. I was like 26 <laughs> at the time. I'm like, I, I'm like, I am so far in debt right now. I don't have a nickel you can take. This is to have benefit charity. Like, give me a little slack. Like, why? There's nothing. This is a little small concept in one town. And they did employee benefits for corporations, had nothing to do with the, not the same perks, you know? And long story short is they came after me full fledged. And what really stunk about it is that I asked my attorney to do a name search, which he did incorrectly. But because he was my real estate attorney, we didn't have a, an agreement. So I had no recourse. Mm. So it's like, think about who you hire, you know, and getting stuff for free is not always the best. You know what I mean? So that that advice from him ruined me and then the advertising company i asked about trademarking they said no wait till you prove the concept so i learned a big lesson about trademarking and i'll never forget it and that lesson you know i always no matter what your name is it's like uspto.gov you have to search trademarks because you can build a business and it could be gone like that like that business got destroyed because of that within you know, it was as simple as receiving a packet in the mail. Within two weeks, it was website was gone. If I had distributed anything, I was going to be sued to the fullest. You know, damages everything. So, the but the the silver lining once that business got leveled was wow. Think about the power of online marketing. And so it was at that time, and I said all these local businesses recommended these knuckleheads, and that's who they think is good. And I said, there's got to be a better way. Yeah. I went another 20 grand into, into debt learning online marketing, Facebook advertising. And I said, what if I become someone that goes back to these same businesses and says, you, do you think that these guys are good? Like they just lost all my money. What if I could help you create advertising that made you money? Because what was normal was advertising for branding and then losing all your money. And I said, you know what? What about advertising and making a cash flow? If you put in a thousand bucks, what if you made four thousand back? And that was revolutionary. No one was making that, and that's what I built my entire business on. And that would have never happened if I wasn't just failing forward fast, turning yeah. over stones. And that you know the, the 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 moral of the story is like sometimes you just have to go, you have to pick something, you have to do. And when you always have that mentality to look for the positive. You can always find your next move and it only takes a handful of those moves to where you finally get into that sweet spot where you love what you do and then money just attracts to you so much easier, you know? And it's amazing to see like where you are now because I love what you do. I'm very passionate about the, the changes that you're creating in the world. And I, I guess I just have to ask, you know, what does uh, life on fire mean to you? Because so many people uh, think they're living until they kind of sit back and look at like, what is my life? Like, that's what I had to do is I had to literally script out like, what does my life look like? And what yeah. is it that I want? And so just curious to hear, you know, your perspective on what is life yeah. on fire? So, so what I, what I love is that it's, it, the definition can, you know, can be unique to every single person, you know, and what's important to them. But to me, a life on fire is, it's a life where I just love what I'm doing for work every single day. You know, if you think about it, we spend more time working than any other task, more than more time than with your family, more time with friends, more time than you sleep. And that's what defines us. You know, that's the legacy that we're building. And so for me, it's to love what I do for work. But if my work can impact others and make a difference, and if I can, 
you know, leverage my business to create cash flow that I can give back, I can make a difference in this world. Now, the best part is if I can build up a business that gives back and if I can then inspire other entrepreneurs to build a business and give back, like my life on fire is thinking about I'm creating this big, massive ripple effect where if I can over my lifetime, let's say I donate 10 million bucks in my lifetime and that creates schools and orphanages and all kinds of cool stuff. But if I inspire a hundred entrepreneurs over my lifetime where they each maybe give back a million dollars, you can see how that starts to just impact. And it's like, you know, every single person that I work with, we always, part of what defines who we work with is based around the values of life on fire, which is, you know, making your money matter, making a difference with how you work. And I call it prospering with purpose because when you have purpose behind your business, that's bigger than you. You're going to be motivated. You're going to excel. You're going to attract people to the business. And plus you're just, it's like, you know, cause what I realized is I made a bunch of money when I sold my business, but it's like, for what? It didn't matter. And as soon as you have the mentality that you're going to have a for purpose business, everything shifts. And what's cool is that that's in my head, my life on fire is building that movement and, and creating that tribe of clients that are out making a difference. But that's one piece. That's like my career. You know, outside of that, my life on fire is waking next to the woman of my dreams, you know, and it's like to be able to wake up with her, pray, meditate, go walk on the beach for an hour before we start our day and to just own my life, you know, to, to be in madly in love to have fun, you know, to be able to do weekend getaway trips and not have to feel like I'm chained to a job. So I've got, you know, a level of time freedom where as entrepreneurs, it's our choice on how we live. And a lot of entrepreneurs, they build themselves a job. They build themselves so many walls where it's like, I've got to work 14 hours a day. No, you don't. If you've ever been on vacation, how much do you get done before that vacation? And I challenge my clients and I challenge you, everybody right now to take an extra day off. You know, I, I don't schedule anything on Fridays. Fridays are just additional days that I have off. And it's like, you'll find a way to get more done in less time. And so it's about having that just that enjoyment. And, and, it, and really, when you think about it, that the old way of thinking, in my, in my opinion, is to spend all your time and energy working towards this end destination. That's what I did before when I sold the business at 30. What I realized is that it's not about the destination. It's about loving what you do every single day. That's what drives meaning and happiness and fulfillment. And the people who's, who have regret in life are the ones that spend all their energy working towards retirement. Then they retire and they have no purpose. Or someone that wants to sell the business and make money. Then they do and they have no purpose. It's like when you love what you do every day, you have meaning. And then if you create abundance in your business, you can take that, you can give back, you can have time freedom, have time for friends, family, and love, and all that good stuff. So, you know, I just think of it as just living to the fullest to your potential and looking fear in the face, going straight at it each and every single day. That's so awesome. And, and know, that was my short answer for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the short one. The long one would be here the until next one, week. The long one, man. That's a whole other sesh. <laughs> well, ne next time I will make sure that we can like produce a documentary for you. I'll come over. We'll interview you for like awesome. two weeks. I'll follow you around on your crazy trips and your walks on the beach. And maybe we'll make that happen. But, you know, for right now, I'd love to give everybody, you know, what's a URL where they can check out, you know, everything you're doing. Uh, you also post these really great videos on Fridays uh, mm -hmm. that I'd love to kind of tell people about so they can check those out, too. Yeah, what I, what I would say is, you know, just connecting with us at lifeonfire.com. Um, you know, basically, we just we publish our, you know, podcast there, you know, we do that on Mondays with, with our Life on Fire TV podcast. So we have, you know, audio and video. Basically, I mean, the whole purpose of that is, is we want to have awesome free content that can help you live your life on fire. So that's everything from marketing to time management to motivation to um, interviewing awesome people. And then also, you know, Fridays, we have a thing called Pay It Forward Friday, where we just go out on camera and do random acts of kindness. Um, I've got a big one coming up where I'm going to be... Uh, um, giving away my car to someone who really, really, really needs it. Um, so that, uh, that will be coming soon, but uh, that'll be fun. Hey everyone, it's Zeph. Did you like this episode? Be sure to subscribe so that you can tune in next week and tell a friend about the show. If you want access to free training and exclusive interviews on success, happiness, lifestyle design, and adventure, visit me at yearofpurpose.com. Until next time, go out and let life surprise you so that you can live 
a life rescripted.